This evening, the subject of our contemplation is you do not have God's permission to live with limited mindsets. You do not have God's permission to live with limited mindsets. So, we'll be going through what I call transition from step-down thinking to step-up thinking. I like to call it step-down syndrome so that you know it's a sickness. Worse than Down syndrome. We're going through transition from step-down thinking or syndrome into step of thinking. Are you ready? Please turn your Bible with me to Psalm 78, verse 1 to 20, and then I will read 40 to 41. Psalm 78, 1 to 20, and I will read 40 to 41 before we go to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1 to 12. Psalm 78, 1 to 20 reads, and I quote, Give here, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Will we now hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that a generation to come might know them, the children who will be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. You may not realize the import of the scripture I just read until we gather together here on Friday and look at legacy wealth and blessings, lessons from our founding fathers. And I'm sorry for those who are so busy or feel they can just uh, take some, uh, attend some, and leave some without any tangible reason. I pray you will not have yourself to blame hereafter. This is not compelling you to come, and this is not uh, blaming those who are present for those who are not here, not at all. I just feel for you inside of me that if by any means you miss out on what God has in store for you this year, I pray that you will find mercy in Jesus' name. He said they will tell it from generation to generation up to the children yet to be born. Why? That they may not be like their fathers. A stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set his heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. When I was young, any time my mother rebuked me or chastised me and I said I was not going to eat, she would beat me again till I eat. She would say the reason you do not want to eat is because you do not want to take and learn the lessons and heed what I've taught you. You will eat. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. If you want to understand the consequence of what they did, for their sake, for what they did, God rejected the tabernacle of Joseph forever and picked on David that we read about yesterday. With all that Joseph did in Egypt, the generation that survived him were armed to the feet, but on the day of battle, they turned back. They did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law. 
And what is the applicable law here? You are going to wax strong in battle if you do not turn back. You see that in Hebrews 11.32. They wax strong in battle. They were there. They were going with weakness, with trembling. But the moment they turned there, God's strength was made perfect in their weakness. The common, the uncommon and unusual elevation that will take place in 2024 is not contingent upon your skill set, is not contingent upon your education, is not contingent upon your personal development, is contingent upon your willingness, your ready, able, and willing to just heed God's command. They forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoad, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. If you were there that day, is that not enough to follow this God? And he made the water stand up like a heap. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud. It was air conditioning system all through. It was a pillar. But the scorching sun could not affect them. And they all denied with a light of fire, another pillar that would not allow cold to, to devastate them. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink in abundance like the depths. He also brought streams out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. But they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. Don't you do it sometimes? When you are running and pursuing something that God is here to do, you are not appreciative of what he has done. And they tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, they struck the rock so that the waters gushed out. We have seen that. And the streams overflowed, yes. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? You know he provided. But while the meat was in their mouth, he slew the strongest of them. Are you in verse 20 yet? Okay, let's go to verse 40 and 41. Verse 40 and 40. How often they provoked God in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Proverbs chapter 9 Verse 1 to 12. Proverbs 9, 1 to 12. Wisdom is about to build a house. huh? No, you're not talking to me. Wisdom has built a house. She has hewn out as seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished a table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, simple here is not foolish. Simple here is teachable. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and leave. And go in the way of understanding. He who corrects his coffer gets shame for himself. And he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct his coffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. We are going to read the next verse together. For by me, I can't hear you, for by me, your days will be multiplied. Do you know what that means? That does not mean that uh, your days will go into multiplication table. No. What others accomplish in years and hours, you can accomplish in a short time because God is multiplying your days and years of life, not just years of existence. Many people merely exist. They don't live. 
years of life will be added to you. I remember one day praying for Pastor Simon and for Labi on his birthday. And I said, God will add life to your years and years to your life. He said, Amen. And call me back and say, Sir, where is that from? And I showed him this scripture. Years of life will be added to you. God will not only add years to your life, He will add life to those years that no matter how old you are, you are still strong and you are still, uh, you know, you still spin. Look at me very well. I've been having this discussion with Mrs. B almost all day, all week long. I said, Mrs. B, I'm 70 this year. He said, you are not 70 yet until November. I said, what is this year? It's this year. Do I look 70? Wait till I'm 90. If the Lord tarries, you still see me spinning because it's adding life to my years. Have you read the scripture that in their old age, they shall still bring forth? How old is President Biden? Who knows? Huh? 84? 81? And at 70, Oti Dekele? He's still president of probably the foremost nation in the world, still serving, and at 70, nobody can see you now. Oti Darale, Oti Dekele, May God add life to your years today. May Almighty God renew your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. But that's if you are wise. You are going to read verse 12 together. Ready? Read. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you bear it alone. The danger of our preaching is step down thinking. All limited mindset is that those who do so will definitely tempt God and limit the Holy One of Israel in their lives, in their families, in their ministries, and in their businesses. The danger of operating in step-down thinking, all limited mindset, is that those who do so will definitely tempt God. It doesn't tempt anyone with evil. But they will tempt God and limit the Holy One of Israel in their lives, in their families, in their ministries, in their businesses. Remember, Gideon said, who am I? Who is my father? Who is my tribe? We are the least. The angel had to change his mindset and say, go in this your strength, thou mighty man of valor. He did not see himself as a mighty man of valor. Brothers and sisters, the Bible states in Proverbs 23, 7, concerning a stingy man. That's a scripture we apply anyhow. Not that it doesn't apply, it cannot apply to every man, but this is addressing a stingy man, that the way he thinks in his heart. So is he. Give me Proverbs 23, verse 6 to 8. Do not eat the bread of a miser. You know, he's addressing a stingy man. Nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The muscle you have eaten, you vomit off. And waste your pleasant work. Now, I know this can apply to almost every man that the way you think <laughs> is the way you are. I shared last night, some went home happy, rejoicing. Others went home sad and miserable because that's the truth. The way you react or act or respond to your neighbor is who you are inside. If you have all hate, you can cover it with certain niceties of complexities, but it will still show up. But if you allow God's love to flood your heart and to flow through you, you will see what kind of people you'll attract to yourself. As you think in your heart, so you are. Let me throw some light on this truth. 
Whenever you think about a subject, any subject for that matter, whenever you think about a subject, it forges a pathway in your brain. Making it easier for you to think about that subject again. You're focusing on something. You're thinking about it just this moment. And then you come back and think about it again. It's forging a pathway in your mind. It's like walking through a forest. Just all by yourself. As you're walking through, you're cutting this way down. You're cutting that down. You're cutting this down and you're walking through. When next you are going through, it will become a good passage for you to pass through. That is the way thoughts operate in your mind. You think about it now. The more you entertain the same thoughts, the wider the road becomes in your mind. If you think healthy, creative, and positive thoughts just a couple of times in a week, but spend most of your time during the same week, thinking about negative, hopeless, destructive thoughts, then metaphorically speaking, you build a six-lane highway into a prison camp while barely hewing out a walking trail to your divine destiny. If all you engage your mind and, 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 and feel your, your life, your thought life with a negative things, but once in a while you say some positive things, it does not matter. You have to continue saying what you know is creative, is positive. You cast down every imagination and anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ in your life. That is a weapon we have. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not man-made. They are strong. And they only are prayed by the help of God, through God, to pull down strongholds that they have built in your family that none of you can be rich. My oldest brother told us, I won't tell you which of them, I have many of them. He told us that we should not build houses old. Because uh, his father built old. He's still standing there. He said, we should not bother building houses. Are you you that? Anytime he would take photographs and camera will stand like this, he will look down. So one day I asked him, why do you always look down when you are taking photographs? I don't know who else was bold to ask him. He said, I yell at you, I yell at you, I bet I They will pierce your eyeball with a needle and you go blind. So it will post well, but it will like me, Rakot alone, Raju, Globe, Shakma, whatever you want to do, go and get your needle. You will pin your, you will pin your own eye by yourself. Do you know what happened? He actually built a house at the end. The few days of the dedication, there were four trees in the premises. They all fell on the house and it collapsed. So when I was building my own, the foundation was so deep that it was a whole floor. <laughs> and I ensured there was no tree around <laughs> except the flower I, we planted thereafter. No tree was there. I'm still living inside. What you think will eventually happen to you? What you fear most will happen to you? Ask Job, he will tell you that. Keep on harboring negative thoughts in your life. Keep on happening. I cannot make it. Nigeria is bad. Economy is harsh. The rate of exchange is terrible. This is the best time for me to spend dollar. I told you before that one day, one dollar will be 1,000. It will be my joy to take one million dollars and become a billionaire. Let me, let me stop it because 
check every man who prospers God's ways, he will have enemies. Check Abraham, check Isaac, check Jacob. If you don't see Philistines being envious of you, you are not there yet. It's a point of thanksgiving. Any time of Bekuli Mwaru, O Washington, Kolia Laru, Emila Nitaye Tiro, Ripe Kole Dan Koreshe, Shuma Moria, Nuregba, O Luaru, Loba, Missy, O Luaru, Loba, Missy, O Luaru, Loba, Missy, Alade, O Go. In 1974, I became a Christian. September 24. October 14, we're going to have a family prayer. And since I was the only one that had gone to Quranic school and graduated, I would normally lead in those prayers. So I was called upon to lead the prayers. And I said, sorry, I'm not going to lead anymore. I am now born again. I said, born? Born at what? I said, born again. Like a joke. My eldest brother said, I give you five minutes to change your mind or to pack your load. What was it there to pack? Two pairs of trousers, three shirts, two pairs of shoes, one Apollo 11, the other night of Paris, and a few books in a portmanteau. In no time, I packed. I thought it would say, where are you going? As I stepped out, they locked the door. There was nowhere to go to that night. I passed the night at Alagomiji petrol station. You understand me? I'm not going to give you details because I want you to buy my memoirs. <laughs> Eventually, I got a house. It was like pantry. And when my eldest brother knew I was living there, he attacked the man and said, I drove a, a person from my house and you are harboring him in your house. It was evening. I just applied fleet, you know fleet. What was it? Insecticide. It was, it was fleet. And the man came, seized the opportunity, said, you are smoking Indian hemp. I said, me, I don't even smoke cigarette. It is fleet. That's what we call it. You call it insecticide. It was fleet that I applied. He gave me quick notice.
So I started looking for where to stay. Leave that story, you read the rest. And then I went through university. I'm jumping many years. And I was working at Buck and Co. I introduced him to you when Anti was buried, Mr. Adeyoni. I introduced him to you that day. He apologized later, we made up. I went through university, was working with Buck and Co. And we're about to do bulk printing. He had become a printer. I was in charge. So he came, put his bid in, and my boss said, oh, you have to see uh, uh, Barrister Tunde Bakari. Uh, he will look at your papers. And he came in, and I looked at him. And he said, it is you? I said, it is me. But before you got here, I've made up my mind that I will give you this job. Change this and change that, and it is yours. And he started crying. Inside of me, I was saying, Amy, no, call. Allah, no, Obama, me. Hey, hey, just listen. Something is about to happen. History is about to repeat itself. Those who look down on you are about to look up to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. For the sake of his children, I will, not, I will not state his name. You may find it in the book because it happened. Let me share three things with you before I go into the message. This is preliminary. We finish at 8, right? That's the deal. It's just 701. Three major things I want you to please Keep inside your heart in a place where you will not just forget. Do anything and everything you can to constantly remember these three things. Number one, principle number one, whatever you cultivate in your mind will dominate you. Whatever you cultivate in your mind will dominate you. I appeal to you by the mercies of God, watch what you listen to, watch what you watch, because they will create desire parts in you and invite more of the same in the spirit. I like to repeat myself. If you do not watch, what you look at, what you are watching on television, what you are listening to on radio, if you don't watch them, they will not just only dominate you, they will create desire parts in your mind that will attract and invite more of the same spirit, more of the same in the spirit to you. Like magnet to iron fiber, the kind of people you attract to yourself a byproduct of your dominant thoughts. Edda Bode is not, is not with microphone. You see why the rich attracts the rich and the poor continues to attract the poor? Is their dominant thought. That's what I just said in Yoruba language. Mark chapter 4, verse 24 and 25. Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear more, we be given. You would think he's just talking about the word of God here. Listen to it. By your standard of measure of the things you watch, things you, it's like going on the internet. If you go to a particular site today, huh, you think it's free. You think it's okay. But then you'll be seen Prop-ups, 
that will come to you is because you have visited their site and they say you like it, they will send you more. The measure you use to measure what you worth will be measured back to you. You are attracting things to yourself because angels and demons, they move at the speed of thought. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, hidden the voice of his word. What do they do? They heed the voice of his word. Now, if you keep on declaring God's word, they travel at the speed of your thought because it takes thought, to speak words. In like manner, demons travel at the same speed. They're looking for you. The music you listen to can make you mad or set you free. When a demon will attack Saul the king, David will play music. It will subside. Right? Three times they attempted to throw javelin to kill him. The man was just playing his music and dodging him. And his madness was reducing. When he was not there, the madness climaxed. If music can bring madness down and insanity down, wrong music can make same people insane. There are people who have committed suicide listening to music. That's why I don't, under, I don't dance any music I don't understand. I don't hear what they are saying. I don't know why they are saying it. It's all ridiculous and clumsy. So... I do not even move. I will not let my body move. I'm not saying you should not listen. But me, what I dance to, Igba meta ni igba edala yo. Kale so mi jo ro lo baba. Igba ro, igba so, igba le. Kale so mi jo ro lo baba. Ori mi ye o, ma gba body. Edami ye o, ma jen shi she. Adura mi gba o. Ogba, Ogba. If you don't like, don't attend my 78th birthday party. Because that's the music I will dance to. Are you here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> it has brought me to this level. That's the kind of music I listen to. I listen to some gospel singers too. Uh, like, uh, what is the name of the one? Bashi. Uh, Nathaniel Bashi. What we waited for has come to pass. She was the Lord. Uh, I think it's the kind of person I'll invite you into that banquet that day. Um, number two principle. Your feelings are great servants, but they can also be terrible masters. You know how you, you say, that's how I feel. Your feelings can be a great servant and they can also be a terrible, tyrannical master. Let's consider Cain, the firstborn of Adam and Eve. And God's counsel to him when jealousy was plaguing him. Listen to God's counsel to Cain. Genesis 4, 5 to 7. Let me start from verse 4. So that we can have clarity. Thank you. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his what? His countenance. His attitude. His feeling fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? Why have you changed your countenance? Somebody comes in and boom, you are fixed. The person has a button of your life. You are not free. You are a slave. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and his desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Did he rule over it? No, his feelings overwhelmed him. He ended up being his brother's killer. Your feelings can be a great servant, or it can be a terrible tyrant 
master. May you not become your brother's killer. In Jesus' mighty name. First John chapter 3, 11 to 15. First John 3, 11 to 15. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning. That we should do what? Love one another. You can repeat this. There are people who know here. Say, I can't love that person. I've just told you. You are scoffing. You have yourself to blame. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you are scoffing, you scoff for yourself. Do not be like Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. If you see someone that is better than you, learn the skill. Learn what they have. Or develop your own. Don't be envious of other people. Can you imagine how terrible it will be if I begin to compete with Mike? So if Mike preaches and they clap for him, I say, ha, I need to stop this man from preaching. If everyone is now attracted to him. Supposing tomorrow he says he's going to start his own ministry. That's what happened to the fathers of faith that killed the young ones, never allowed them to manifest because they do not realize they will become the extension of the territory of their influence. It is stupidity. It is, it is nonsensical. It is foolishness for you to begin to compete with those God has brought around you to raise and to release. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. That's how you pass from death to life. Every time you release love, you release life. Every time you release hate, you will attract death. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life. I didn't say he didn't have eternal life. So he does not have it abiding. Oh, well, let's, let, let's drive that point home. Same John. Let's conclude that matter today. I pray that the love of God will flood your heart. For your brothers and sisters, no matter how the enemy has poisoned you, John chapter number 4, 1 John 4, 20 to 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So stop singing, and I love you, love. hypocrite, liar, and I lead my hands. Stop it. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must, underline it, must love his brother also. Now, number three, he has a bottom line, the third principle. You cannot change your life, but if you change your thoughts, Jesus will transform your life. You can't change your life by yourself. You can have New Year, what do you call it? A uh, New Year. So, New Year resolution. And that's not what we call it in my days. Is, is that what we call it? New Year resolution? I can't remember what it was called because I don't have any, any longer. I have new strategies, goals, and strategies for every year. <laughs> okay, New Year resolution. I, I remember. New Year resolution. New Year resolution. Don't oh, help. You cannot change your life, but if you change your thoughts, Jesus will transform your life. Mark chapter 7, 14 to 23. Mark 7, 14 to 23. When he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There's nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. What's going to defile a man? You'll find out soon. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples, when he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? 
Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach. And it's eliminated, thus purifying all foods. Because what you eat, you soon go to the bathroom. If I still do any mummy at all. And he said, what comes out of a man? That defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed. Evil thoughts, what are they? Adulteries, fornications, murders. You can read all the list. It's first a thought before it becomes an action and before it becomes a habit and before it forms a destiny. From within, out of the heart of man produce, proceed evil thoughts. And he listed them. By the time you get to Galatians chapter 5, those evil thoughts had become the works of the flesh which are manifest. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. How do you do that? Don't allow yourself to be squeezed into the mold of this world, into their thinking pattern, into the processes by which they think and act. Do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed how? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Somebody will read that and say, yes, I may not be in the perfect will of God. I'm in the permissive will of God. There is no permissive will of God. Every will of God must have three dimensions. It must be good, it must be acceptable, and it must be perfect. Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. You are going to put up one and put on the other. By God's grace, the grace to do so will be imparted to you in Jesus' mighty name. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. They are ignorant, they are blind. Who being past feeling, you know, if you feel like it, do it. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to walk all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, that's by Christ, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. How do I renew my mind? What do I do to do so? John chapter 6 verse 63 It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. You want us to test this so that you get it? Huh? All right. Words are spirits. What you store up in your mind, you cultivate, and it will dominate your life. How many of you went to my type of primary school? I'll sing a song. Please join me if you know it. Some rivers in Africa. Some rivers in Africa. Abiola did not go to such school. So he didn't know the song. Some rivers in Africa. Some rivers in Africa, uh, Nai, Niger, Benue, Congo, Orange, Limpo, Pusambezi. We were taught that so that if there is any question in those days, if there was any question, name some rivers in Africa. Before you start writing, you start singing. Nai, Niger, Benue, Congo, Orange, Limpo, Pusambezi. You know what God said about his word? He said, teach them these statutes in songs. They will never forget 
That's why artists sing songs that will take you either to hell or propel you into heaven. Because you will not forget. H-I-P for the heap. E-O-P-O for the E-P-O-P-O. And T-M-U-S for the E-P-O-P-O-T-E-M-U-S. Hippopotamus. Have you forgotten it? Can you misspell hippopotamus and you die? You just sing it. H I P for the hip. P O P O for the hippopo. And T M U S for the hippopotamus. Hello. Words stood up here. Okay. Hey, hey. I feel all right. One time. Hey, hey. I feel all right. Two times. Uh, uh. Hey, hey. I feel all right. Three times. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, hey. I feel all right. Four times. Uh, 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 uh. He went to jail. You. James Brown. <laughs> the word I speak to you, their spirit and their life. If you saturate your mind with the word of God, it doesn't matter what the enemy brings you. Say, it is written. But when you do not saturate your mind with the word of God, negativities will saturate it for you. The word I speak unto you, their spirit, their, you cannot get me to think outside of scriptures. Try. It won't happen. That's the only way I think. Whether you want to hear, it's everything, everything we talk to you say, the Bible says, that's all I know how to say. Because it says, if the spirit that is upon you and the word that I put in your mouth is in the mouth of your children and in the mouth of your children's children, then what will happen? Arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Darkness shall cover the earth. And grass darkness the people. I don't care what mountain stands before me. I know they will be leveled by the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So now. I'd like to share some thoughts with you. That I believe can facilitate people's transition. From step down. To step up thinking. This idea of step up thinking first hit me at the APC primary convention at the Eagle Square in Abuja in 2022. I was there. Mr. President, or former president now, <laughs> nothing is permanent in life. No matter how powerful you think you are, you are, you are going to become ex this and ex that. It's a question of time. The former president stood up in the midst of all the presidential candidates. The vice president was there. Every one of us, when the three candidates were there, he said, I've looked through all days and I've come to the decision that the way we selected the chairman of the party is the way we must select the presidential candidate, will go by consensus. There will be no election. And everybody clapped. The first man to speak was Ogbonoya Ono, a gentleman. He said, you have showed leadership that we can follow. Whoever you choose to be your candidate will not accept. The second person was Bagudu. He got up and he said, Mr. President, I have bought the form for presidential, uh, 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 whatever it is, uh, as a candidate. But the day you tell us your candidate, I step down. I drop the form. The last man to speak was Vice President Yami Oshibadu. He said, you know, in my own constituency, especially the, the judiciary, when the lead justice who read his judgment, his brother justices will say, I concur. The chief justice for this occasion is President Muhammad Buhari, and I also concur. We all clapped and left. 
and all kinds of shenanigans followed. Nigeria is paying for it now. Do you understand me? And rather than having a candidate that he will present, he said they will all go and vote. I will tell it in my memoirs. This is not the time. Okay. Are you here? Uh, so, I waited because I took what he said serious, that it would be by consensus. And told you by Yeju, let me give you a backdrop because many of you do not know these things. You just misuse your tongues. I don't mean you, but if that offends you, it is you. <laughs> okay, I'll skip that. It's not necessary for now. Because I remember clearly that I said I would never buy that form. And when the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I did not go, when Jesus, I beg your pardon, I know the difference in their voices. If you don't, you will grow up. Okay. When he said to me, I did not go to the cross as God. I did not send an angel. I took the form of a man in order to go to the cross to redeem man. Take that form and leave the rest to me. I obeyed him. But before picking the form, I went to the president. I'm saying this in the open. If you have not heard it, I said, Mr. President, do you have a dog in this race? He said, no. Okay. How about MFA? Because it's not natural for your governor of Central Bank to be in the race. He said to me, those who, are, those who want a job are deceiving him. I went back to MFLA to repeat what I heard. He said, those who are helping me will table it before him. I said, Lord, I don't want to put my head in this mess. So I went back to the president. Sir, if you don't have a horse, a dog in this race, if I'm interested, what will you do? He said, I don't see anybody that qualifies better than you. But before you buy the form, let us meet. I'm saying this publicly. If you want to lie against a living person, do so. The consequences will follow you. Say, let us meet before you pick the form. I came to this house. And he sent me a scope. This is not about this message. It's to illustrate something. The state chief of protocol sent me a message to meet with the president on the 6th of May at 9.15 p.m. That was the day the form we closed. Ah. When I received the message, I said, something is not adding up here. Lord, he said to me, pick that form and leave the rest to me. The man that's on the sea said, see me at 9.15 p.m. the day the form will close. Who will I obey? I found myself like David, being pulled here and being pulled there. So I sent for Pastor Biola. I said, check this account, my account for me, and let me know how much is there. They told me, okay, it's not enough to make 100 million. Check my domiciliary account. They checked it. I said, take $100,000 from there, change it. You are hearing that for the first time. Not a dime came from your church account. If you misuse your tongue, we judge you. They changed it, and it was more than 100 million and I transferred the money. So I cannot disobey God because by the time I would get to Abuja, the form would have closed. And I left it. On the 3rd of May, my entire family, my wife and children, we went to Abuja. On the 4th, Ogedengbe is in the house. Ogedengbe went to clear to the office to get clearance that the money has been received by them. On the 5th of May, we took the form. And on the 6th of May at 9.15 p.m., I went to see Mr. President. And the first question I asked him, are you dribbling me? He said, what do you mean by dribbling you? I said, you said I should not take the form until I, we meet. I thought we'll have some things to discuss. He said, yes. I said, you shouldn't. I said, but you gave me the day that the form will close. And he smiled as the form closed. 
I said, no. It was extended on the 5th to the 9th. He said, so, what is my offense? I said, okay. If I've taken the form before I get here, and that offense, here's the form. Return it to them and tell them to return my money. I say, before God will judge the quick and the dead. He said, no, you're not doing any sort of things. Give me the form. And he took the form and prayed on it and hit his head three times. He's alive. He said, go for screening. After that, we take it over. And it was after the screening that he said, we are going to have consensus candidates. I didn't go to Abuja to campaign for election. And that's why I didn't see a single delegate. I didn't see a single governor. I followed the instruction that I've received. Do you understand me? But it turned out that way. And when they began to vote, two days or three days before that, there was in my house. And two of the, of the candidates came to meet me at home. You read their names in my memoir. They are now S governors too. They came to my home and said, hey, Mom, we have gone around. A told us this. B told us this. We have spoken to the vice president. It looks like everything is on you. The reason we are here, one of them spoke. He said, if this man gets it, I know I get it. And if I get it, I know he gets it. So we are here to ask you, if you get it, what will be our position? I said, are you asking me to step down for you? He said, no. He said, what do you want me to do? He said, I should pray that one of us should get it so that we all can be in it. I said, let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, don't give it to this one from somewhere. <laughs> I don't want to mention his name. In Jesus' name, don't give to this one too. And Lord, please don't give it to me. Give it to, let Nigeria win in your presence and give it to whoever you think would do it. They opened their eyes and said, hey, boy, they told us we are wise. Now we know. <laughs> so the day came, I went to Eagle Square to see what the end product would be that day. And I saw this man one after the other, they will climb there because I still have years ahead of me. That's one of those who came to my house. I have I stepped down for so and so. The second one, I have I stepped down. The third one, I have I stepped down. The fourth one, I have I stepped down. The fifth, I have I stepped down. Inside of me rose something stronger than I thought was there. I said, ain't stepping down for anybody. I'm stepping up to become the 16th president of Nigeria. But you seated there and you are saying, but Bola Chinobu is the 16th president. He's not. He is not. At best, he's 15th. At the worst, he's 17. I will explain it to you in future. He's not. He's not. He's not. I'm not debating anything. I'm not arguing anything with anybody. I'm just letting you know. I went there. It was when they were stepping down that that war hit me, and I turned back, I saw Uzo, I said, give me my iPad. It was on that spot, I wrote that seven minutes speech. I said, ain't stepping down for anybody, I'm here to step up to become this. Now, and I stepped down. After that, nothing has affected me. Why? Because if you purpose anything, it's a question of time. It will come to pass. About three, four days after the day was sworn in, my wife did not, my wife did not watch the swearing in ceremony of Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. I did. None of my children was there too. I said, turn on the television, give me my coffee and give me my sandwich. I sat there from the beginning to the end till it was sworn in. Uh, and I don't want to comment about this person. He's not an enemy. I'd never seen him as one. Do you understand me? And that's why I could say publicly, whatever I think towards him, let it happen to me sevenfold. Let him say that about me. 
And I'm saying this because of what I want to bring out of our step of thinking. I came down. I watched. So I went to God. Lord, you said this to me. I've watched this. You are God. I can query you. But I'm asking that you guide me so that my heart remains steadfast and pure to continue to love you regardless of what the world will say. And I had nothing. He didn't say a word to me. But peace flooded my heart. That same evening, a son and the faith of mine sent me a publication from the office of the, uh, what is state, what do you call it, Bob Mustafa? SGF. And they listed the number of presidents in Nigeria. And according to their publication, Buhari was number 16 in that publication. I looked at it. I sent a message back. How can this be? Buhari cannot be number 16. So I checked with that office to be sure the publication came from them. And it is. It was then I suddenly realized that they included Namdi Azikiwe as number two after Tafa Balewa, which we have never included because it was Governor General, but he became president that can dissolve cabinet. So he became, he had power to dissolve cabinet. So they included him as number two before they started listing them. So if Buari was number 16, then Tinubu can only be number 17. But if you count Obasanjo who appeared twice, and Buari who appeared twice, and you count them as one, one person, Buari will be 14, Tinubu will be 15. The 16th is still protected. A day is coming. You don't have to clap. You don't have to clap. These are my thoughts. And it gives me strength to keep on declaring what he had said to me, regardless of who is listening. It was that day that I said, ain't stepping down from anybody, I'm stepping up. And when I came back to the South, immediately we were going to have Dominion Partners uh, quarterly seminar. On the 22nd of July, check your phone. Biola, I sent to you, I said, the theme for this conference is step up thinking. And God stopped me, not yet. You know, that was the time we were having the controversy from Creflo Dollar. I said, okay, let's change that. We'll do it in December. And we didn't. And let's swap it with honoring God with our giving. December came, we didn't. So today you're going to hear it. Are you ready to step up? I can't hear you. I give you that background now because I want to tell you tales that you still read later. I'm consistent whatever I do and whatever I say is deliberate. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, I'll keep on telling you the truth that I know. And when it happens, who knows? Who knows? Whenever what God says happens, whether it happens now or it happens later, we'll compare notes. You will hear, I am Joseph, your brother you sold. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who is ready for step up thinking? I cannot hear you. Who is tired and you want to go home? You are free. I know my friend is going to pick the phone and say, Pastor, you shouldn't say these things publicly. I'm waiting for him. That's the real low dollar. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The truths you need to embrace in order to facilitate the transition from step down thinking to step up thinking as follows. Number one, we are a new creation. We are new creation, born again into the kingdom of God. I'm sure you are familiar with 2 Corinthians 5, 12 to 17. We used to think of Christ as just an ordinary man, but we no longer think so. Let me start from verse 12. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. 
For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If you have sound mind, it is for you. But the love of Christ compels us because we judge us that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is what? A new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The word new in that statement actually means prototype. Dig deep and find the meaning of it. The word new means prototype. Something never before created. You will recall that Jesus said concerning John the Baptist, and of all men born of women, none has a reason is greater than John the Baptist. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. I want you momentarily to begin to consider some of the saints who lived in the Old Testament. Abraham, Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Esther, Deborah, David, Solomon, and even Daniel. If Jesus said of all men born of women, in all of the Old Testament, none is greater than John the Baptist. So it would mean to me, it was the greatest of that era. And then he said, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. I'm talking of step of thinking now. Please forget about politics. Take it out of, don't allow any cobweb to form in your mind. If Jesus said the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist, you can at least take two of such people, Solomon and Daniel. And let's compare notes. Concerning Solomon, let's check his wisdom. At what level was his operational base for his thinking capabilities and activities? First Kings 4, 29 to 34. Listen to the kind of wisdom that God gave Solomon. And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. One man. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezraite, the Hema and Amon, Chalcol, Dada, the sons of Mao, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. I can stop here. Look at all the men. He spoke 3,000 words. Uh, Proverbs, look at all the men. Wise men were gathered together. He was wiser than them. And then Jesus said, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. And you are still entertaining limited thoughts. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. It's because you're not properly connected to God for him to think through your thoughts and then begin to speak through your vocal cords. Something is wrong. We are going to change that in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. How about Daniel? My Lord, Daniel was 10 times wiser than all the wise men and magicians of Babylon, including all the astrologers and Chaldeans. Daniel 1, 17 to 21. As for these four young men, Daniel was their leader. God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days, when the king has said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who are in all his realm. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. And you know when the son of Nebuchadnezzar became the king, there was a handwriting on the wall. 
that no magician could read, no astrologer could read. The queen mother counseled the king to send for Daniel. Daniel chapter 5, verse 8 to 12. Daniel 5, 8 to 12. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was greatly troubled. Sorry, King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords were astonished. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance change. Why? There's a man in your kingdom, Kai, in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Would you stand to your feet? If the least in the kingdom of God is greater than Solomon, if the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist, if the king in the, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than Daniel, what is between your two ears is greater than what you think. You are going to ask God to wire you up to himself today so that you can operate optimally, optimally, optimally. All low-level thinking, all limited thought must stop in your life, in the name of Jesus. God Almighty must begin to think through your thoughts and speak through your vocal cord. In Jesus' mighty name, because the Lord himself said, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than all these men. You are not praying. You are not praying. This is your life on the scale. I'm putting you on the scale of the word of God. It's time to ask God, Lord, I trust you for wisdom. I trust you for knowledge. I trust you for understanding. If Daniel was 10 times wiser, if you say our children will be wiser than their teachers, we ask you in the name of Jesus, the wisdom for the hour, the wisdom for this season, the wisdom that will cause us to have uncommon, unusual elevation we receive now by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for answers coming from your presence in Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. Maybe you do not know, but brethren, as New Testament believers, we are the first creatures to live on earth and in heaven simultaneously. Our citizenship is in heaven. Jesus himself said to Nicodemus, no man had ever ascended to heaven at any time except the son of man who is talking to you now, but at the same time, who is in heaven. As New Testament believers, we are the first set of creatures to live on earth and live in heaven simultaneously. So, Jesus declared what should happen to the world if we do what we are supposed to do. What is it that will happen to the world if we do what we are supposed to do? Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16. If we become who he wants us to be and we do what he expects us to do and we st stay glued to what he has said concerning us, hear him. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, I shall it be seasoned. It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, and what will happen to the world? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They will know you are not normal, I mean, you are not abnormal, but you are super normal. That this cannot be man. This has to be God. They will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Stand to your feet and say, Lord, let the world glorify you in me. 
and then begin to glorify God in me. From this day forward, I'm not going to operate with limited knowledge, limited understanding. No, 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 no. I'm going to get myself involved in step up thinking, not step down thinking. In the name of Jesus, I will not limit you in my life. Men will see me and glorify God in me. Paul said, and they glorify God in me. The time to manifest your glory in me and through me is here. I latch onto it. I draw down from you. And I receive that in Jesus' mighty name. How can we utilize properly our access to heaven through the Spirit of God? How can we listen to the Word of God? Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 18. Ephesians 2, 8 to 18. Listen carefully. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works that men will see. That's why we are created. That's why we are new creation. For good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Talk to the Father. Every good work you have mapped out for my life, grant me grace to walk in them. While I'm still living, help me, O oh Lord, to walk in those things you have mapped out for my life. I will fulfill my destiny. I will reach my goal in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that those things you have mapped out for my life, I will walk in them and fulfill them in Jesus' name. Now listen. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles, those without God in the flesh, who are caught in circumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments containing ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Listen very carefully. And that he might reconcile them both to God, the Jews and the former Gentiles who are now believers. He might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Verse 17. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to those who are near. For what purpose? For through him, through Christ, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. You are not limited to this world. You have access by the Spirit of God to the Father. To know what is in the mind of the Father. To know what the Father is thinking, what the Father is doing. You can begin to think the thoughts of God and begin to gather what God is doing. We have access through Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God to the Father. So we know the heartbeat of the Father and we are willing to do what He wants done. In Jesus' mighty name. Say to your neighbor, I'm a new creation. I'm beginning to understand how I'm to act, how I'm to think, how I'm to behave, how I'm to work. In Jesus' name, amen. Sit down. Number two, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Not only are we new creation, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand the full implication of our being the temple of the Holy Spirit? This is my understanding. My understanding is that God who envisioned everything and spoke the words, the ages into existence, live inside of us. Not only that, the Father and the Son, not just the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son also have made their abode in us. Jesus said in John 14, 22 to 23, if you obey my word, I and my Father we come and will make our abode in you. Verse 23, please. Thank you. Jesus answered them and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and will come to him and make our home with him. Imagine the God of the universe, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit indwelling you. If you put all that together, we are no longer strangers. 
We are the very house of God being built in the spirit. Therefore, if God wants anything done on earth, the first set of people to speak to are those who are no longer strangers, but fellow citizens. Lay hold on God tonight and say, Lord, whatever you want done, here am I, send me, speak to me, show me, guide me, help me. I'm not going to rely on my own thought patterns any longer. No, 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 no. I'm going to rely on you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, because you indwell me. And just as you reveal what you're about to do to Abraham and to the prophets of God, I yield myself to you today. Even when I don't fully understand, speak the word and your servant will hear and obey in Jesus' mighty name. I want to recommend, if it's possible, that by Sunday or the hereafter, God helping us, that you get me a t-shirt written in front, God on board. God on board. I carry him everywhere I go. He's on board. That is a person I carry everywhere. He indwells me. God on board. And at the back, right there, we are the carriers of God's glory. He's on board. We are carriers of his glory and will manifest that glory on the face of the earth. Can I hear amen? amen. Number three, we have the mind of Christ. Are you following? We are a new creation. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God and the Father indwell us. We also have the mind of Christ. What does that mean? We are God's think tank. We have the mind of Christ. We have received the Spirit of God who knows the mind of God and who dwells in us. If anyone asks, just as Paul the Apostle, asks the question, who has known the mind of God? The answer is, we have the mind of Christ. It means we can now reason together with God. He said, come, let us reason together. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But if we have the mind of Christ, we become his think tank and he will think through us and speak through us. Can I hear amen? amen? Number four. In addition to the gift of the word of wisdom by the Holy Spirit, we are also endowed with the manifold wisdom of God. That's why we need step up thinking in this hour. We are endowed with the manifold wisdom of God. By his manifold wisdom, God reveals the mysteries of his kingdom. That's what the Bible says. So that even principalities and powers will come to the church to learn of this manifold wisdom. For me personally, when I think of this manifold wisdom of God, I see it as the wisdom of King Solomon on steroids. Do you understand me? For me, it's wisdom of King Solomon on steroids. You can't limit it. You will know exactly how to judge. You will know exactly how to walk. You know exactly how to operate. The Greek word translated manifold here means multicolored or multidimensional. Jesus has granted us multidimensional wisdom the ability to understand challenging situations from every conceivable and perspective realm and be able to provide solution to human problems and challenges. You can write down if you want to, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 8. You'll find it there. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 8 and Ephesians 3, 1 to 12. Above all, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. <laughs> this is the level where there is no devil. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. I did you know the advantage of this? We have a preview of what God wants to do before they happen. Come up here and I will show you the things that will happen hereafter. Whatever new inventions are coming to the world, whatever new things need to be done, we get to know, we get to do it and maximize profit.
to support the kingdom of God, to extend its frontiers on the face of the earth. We are not just sitting there uh, and, and just enjoying his presence. No. We have a preview of what he wants to do. Who shall I send? Who will go for us? This is a great advantage. You can possess the future in the present. When you begin to process all this and begin to challenge yourself that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, God indwells you, you, you have the mind of Christ, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, He thinks through your thoughts, you will see that things will change. As you begin to step into it, God begins to give you creative ideas that you think you're not capable of. Look at that young man seated there. When he was at Wema, he did what was called a lot. He became the best. And when he saw a kind of pressure coming against him, he stepped into another bank. He created vault. And now he told me yesterday, we are creating a system for the church, for the church and by the church with technology department that we don't have to go through their system to give our offering. We will do it through our own system. And, you know, we, we are getting somewhere. Listen to me. Don't just sit down and be looking at how would this happen. I'm showing you what he has prepared for you so that you can engage yourself in step of thinking. I'm not going to be a low lifer for the rest of my life. I'm going to mount wings like the eagles. I'm going to fly higher than ever before in the mighty name of Jesus. These are the factors that propel us to begin to engage ourselves in step of thinking. Stand to your feet. I don't know how you process all that you've heard, but the things I've just shared with you, they, they make my brain, my mind almost want to explode because of this truth. To begin to walk in the consciousness of, consciousness of the mind, we, we, we blow your brain and put the mind of Christ in its place. Let me give you one example and I close. I obtained not my not, you know that, when it came out. Because the minister of communication at that time was a business partner. We in the cargo business together, all right? And when the first four were released, we got them. One for Dr. Uh, Femi Adebayo, one for me, one for Brother Kumi, and one for another person. The first four from 090. Because of advantage of proximity, I know you got yours. So I went home to my mother. My cousin in London, Mr. Bello, wanted to speak to Mama. And I got to Mama. I said, Mama, and my cousin had wanted to speak to you for a long time. And I called him, and I began to speak with him to hold on for Mama. You know what she said? He said, if you want to deceive your father, go and raise him up from the dead and give him the toy in your hand to be listening to somebody in London. Why are we there so much? So where is the connecting wire? I said, Mama, it is not like that. The time has gone. This is called mobile phone. Is a mobile phone call. Mobile phone. So I told him, I shut down the phone. And he called, thinking that the line was cut off. When it was ringing, I said, Mama, can he end Okay, before me. So I gave it to her. I said, What's your name? What's your father's name? Imagine, what's your mother's name? It's mentioned, what is your nickname? He mentioned, it's Otomani. <laughs> Thank God my mother had a mobile phone before she died, which she used. Many of us are behaving like mama when it comes to new things that God wants to do. But in the name of Jesus, the season has changed. The season has changed. You will know what God wants to do before the world will know. You'll be a step higher than them, a step further than them. In the name of Jesus, because of your step of thinking. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name tonight. Rise up and begin to shine for your God. Arise and shine for your light has come. Illumination, inspiration, revelation, they are your portion. The Lord God will do nothing except he first reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. But not only prophets, the people that fear the Lord, the secrets of the Lord are with them. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us that we might be able to walk the works of this law. Those secret things that have been kept, that have been hidden, they will be revealed to you. You wake up in the morning with brightness of ideas. 
ideas that never existed before will begin to manifest through you and you begin to push the frontiers of the kingdom. Thank you, Father. Receive all the glory, all the praise, all the adoration in Jesus' mighty name. Did you receive anything this evening? You are going to go home with it. Stop thinking and bemoaning your faith. Stop condemning yourself. Stop belittling yourself. I'm not able. I cannot do this. You can do all things through Christ who is indwelling you in Jesus' mighty name.